1.6 million campaign Oh, what a crook But his story was a mess It was plain to see Now he's stuck in the warehouse Filled with misery Now he's stuck in the warehouse Filled with misery He's in love with satanic sisters Oh, what a shame They're twisted Let's see, let me see when this actually was He was on a, uh, you guys ever heard of Midnight's Edge? Through most of the movie You guys ever heard nope. of that? Uh, no, what's that? So it's a, it's actually a pretty good sized Um, like, movie Pop culture nerd shit Um, channel that covers like scoops, you know, they talk about shit they've heard about, new movies coming out, things like that, right? Well, it's a, it's a, I believe a Norwegian guy, a fat, bald, white guy, and a third guy who I can't remember. Or it might just be them two. I, I don't, I'm not real big, I never was a big viewer of them, so I might have some of that shit uh, incorrect. But anyways, they had a stream three days ago where they had Eric July on. Okay, and here here is said stream. Um, you notice anything about about the the stream in particular? Um, they have the bi colors in the background. That's not what I was focusing on. No, not that at all. I kind of highlighted no. it, and you still missed. It. <laughs> Look right here. What does that say? Unlisted. Yeah. They unlisted the stream almost immediately after. Because look at all these comments. Even Ain't It Cool News never sold out this hard. Look what happened to them. Man, that was a torturous interview in the beginning. Was everyone starstruck or afraid to talk? Just awkward silences. I think I know why the Soskas make low-budget trash movies. That trailer is incomprehensible. I watched it four times, and each time I'm more confused. Mm -hmm. So they had Air July on to uh, dis to watch his new Yaira trailer and discuss the upcoming uh, the ongoing campaign. And uh, so, top left is Andre. Bottom left is I believe his name's Tom. Those are the Midnight's Edge guys. You got Eric, of course, in the middle here. You got this guy's called the Script Doctor, which I actually like him. But uh, I like him a little less after this interview. If that was him, like he, his thing, he doesn't have like anything to indicate he's talking. So when that kind of looks like you, eh, not really. And you got this guy who's his name is Call Me Chato. And this guy is a former TV executive from Canada. Okay. Oh, that doesn't even matter. Well, looks like if if I was an American TV ex uh, uh, TV executive, I would probably think the same thing. But the fact that he's been in TV at all and has had two green light shows and stuff, um, gives him a lot more credibility than pretty much anybody else uh, on this fucking stream. Canada, where he's all like, he's a he's probably. Ha is a is probably a great uh, government bureaucracy handler. He probably, probably. did that amazingly but he still because had, it's he all still had it like CBC. Any, he was the the head of of one of the networks up there. So he, which is nationalized. Yeah, I I understand that, Kyle. But even if it's nationalized, he still has to green light shows, cancel shows, hear pitches, and stuff like that. So wh whether whatever his tastes are. We, we may disagree with him on what's a good show and what's a bad show, but he still had to make those decisions, and he still knows what, from his experience, has proven successful and what is not. Right? That's more than anybody else on this panel can say. Right, right. I, I think I the script that. doctor has actually worked in Hollywood, so he, he probably has, you know, quite a bit to say as well, but he immediately rolls over for Eric in this. As far as I could tell, I don't know that... Like I said, he doesn't doesn't bottom really indicate. Right. Go ahead. Sorry, B bottom right guy was that guy that we rated a few that times. Is, that is Culture Casino. I don't think we've rated that guy. 
No. I don't think we've ever raided. Uh, I think it was a similar guy. Remember? Like a similar guy than him. We raided a couple of times on Legion. Big beard guy was kind of... Was a, spa <laughs> a good sportsman. Rock that cast boss says, uh, hey, all those talented Canadians end up in the States eventually. Well, that's where that's what the States are for. All the world's talent needs to come here. Everybody else needs to stay out. That's why we don't like immigrants. <laughs> it's not that we don't like new patriots. <laughs> we don't like people crossing rivers and shit and jumping over fences. Because those people are usually poor. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. So, um, they got such backlash from the chat and from their comments that they unlisted the episode. Um, mm -hmm. And pretty much have just like no, like nobody from their side of the fence has talked about it even like a little. Like as soon yeah, was... as, as soon as it, it, it got unlisted, everybody started going, oh shit. <laughs> but they just won't talk about it. They don't want to fucking talk about it. It must have been pretty bad to like it unleash was, it because I, they do circle jerks all the time. Like, I know. watched uh, here. I'll you know what, I'll give you an example. So this is a uh, this is a clip um, that Katie did made of their reaction to the Yaira trailer. I I skipped past the whole actual trailer part. Fucking save us that goddamn travesty again. Um, but here's here's their reaction after. I'm gonna go back a little bit. I'm going to show you, like, so, like, this guy, who was the former TV exec, has this face pretty much the entire trailer. Just a... <laughs> and he's usually pretty accommodating. Like, he usually just be like, he's very, like, you know, willing to, you know, kind of cheerlead and stuff a lot of times. A few times I've seen him. But he just seemed like he was bored out of his fucking skull. Much went into that. And again, that's another thing I learned so much about. Just, uh... Yeah. And at the very end, she... Oh, let me go right here. You took that like a chomp. Were you trying to knock me out? No. If it's meant to be a death blow. It's meant to be a death, death blow. blow. <laughs> In Russia, we we do that blue. In the train, we blow the guys. It's my clip that. <laughs> we blow the guys and then we kill them. It's the dead blue. The dead blue. Yeah, right. Stay down. Nah, it's just credit, so. All right. Except the end. At the very end, she shows up in her actual suit. Um, I'll see her for Ooh. a second. Bonus footage. Two minutes yeah. after. Yeah, I. There we go. <clears throat> Costume's awesome. I love that he had to put an after the credits sequence in a trailer. The costume is shit. Yeah. It looks yeah. like something a fucking someone will use in the fucking carnival here. Legit, you can look at the carnival. You're gonna see better suits than this. Yeah, this. But he here he goes to say that he spent more on the costume than he did on the rest of the production. I don't believe that. Sure. I have been a part of productions. I know how much those fucking things cost. Yeah, you that know, came out. Do you know how much craft services cost for just a single day shoot? Probably <laughs> upwards of four. Like back when I did it, it was like three or four hundred bucks. Now it's probably closer to like six or seven, maybe even eight. That's just for food, for lunch. Cause you oh, had, catering. They had probably yeah. It's, that's what they call catering is craft services. Craft. Yeah. Okay. Craft. So I thought it was prop. And no, no, no that, you know, that's that's prop department. But um, so okay, you they had a crane, they had stunt team. So crane by itself, you got operator. Um, and then you have your camera operators, which nowadays you used to need like three, but nowadays you probably just have two. Then you have probably maybe around 10 people on your stunt team. Um, cinematographer, cameras. Cin yes. Yeah, well, cinematographer is different from your, your <laughs> camera guy, unless you are like doing it super low budget, which is what they were doing. So a lot of times your camera guy will be your cinematographer because you're, you're just getting rid of 
one redundancy and letting the cinematographer just do it. Um, but then you have um, costume, makeup, uh, lighting department. So all your grips, electrical department. Electrical department is an offshoot of lighting department. You have your uh, art department, which is usually like on a set that big, still be like three or four people because you need people moving shit around. Um, that stage probably didn't look like a whole lot, but that probably took like three or four people to set up that little whole staging area. Uh, Maybe he's so out of touch that the, the the Canadian government paid for everything else and he had to pay for the costume. That's why he's like, oh, I hurt my wallet. Well, <laughs> that's what hurt my wallet. They, they claimed that they didn't get any government money from for this. No, that's a lie. All those logos at the end, all, the, all that shit in the credits, it just means that. Anything. Yeah, well, you get tax breaks and that's still getting money from the government. Of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> if I have to it's pay 10K about... for the government and now I don't have to pay, I, I earn 10K. It's 10K Eric free. July argues like a like he does his business like a woman arguing. It's all about semantics. It's here. Probably spent more on the costume than I did <laughs> the actual production of it. <laughs> but uh Yes, Nash. He also he probably had a lot of non union workers. So he, he pro the, probably a good portion of those people working on that set weren't paid. No, I gave you my theory. That what, what a I'm lot saying of, is, that all of the people were Soska's people. Yeah, I was just counting the people to to count for food. Like like and when oh, I say I food, you need you need like bagels and waffles and like orange juices, apple juices, uh cereal, milk and shit like that in the morning, and then you have like to have a full lunch. Like there are requirements you have to meet. Like and those aren't just like union requirements. There are requirements that like if you're doing a shoot and you have so many people, doesn't matter if you're union or not. You don't have this this available. You're getting shut down by the fucking police. Like they they are very especially in some places. Like some places you can get away with it. You I think you'd be you surprised if you were there. I think they pay but, them fucking McDonald's and that's Canada. That's not Hollywood. That's what I'm saying. You still have to provide. It doesn't matter. Like if you're gonna do like a full fucking thing, yeah, you'd go full out on everything. You'd have like. Oh, it's Mexican Tuesday, so we got tacos, burritos, enchiladas, guacamole, whatever. The f you'd have everything. If you're doing a small conservative shoot, you might be like, oh, we're doing um, hamburgers today, so here's hamburgers and some french fries. But you still have to, that's that's going to cut your costs a lot, but you still have to have a certain amount for the number of people on set. So that's why like a lot of independent movies, like really, really independent movies... Like uh, guerrilla filmmaking, your crew is gorilla. like. Well, I mean, that's what they call it because you're running around like a guerrilla warrior, like a guerrilla soldier, fucking getting shots and stuff when you're not technically allowed to be. Like you're you're going around permits and things like that. The way you can get away with that is you keep your crew really fucking tiny. You keep a crew of like you, maybe a sound guy and the actors, and that's it. And you're the director and the camera guy. And if you can if you can make it work, you're also the sound guy. The less people in like that kind of situation, the better. Which that's also kind of a really fun way of making movies. Uh, it's so much went into that. And again, that's another thing I learned so much about. Just uh seeing and seeing her in it. I mean, she has the And that's one of the reasons you would like Tarkovsky. For Ira, you know, she's a kid. It was the epitome of that. You know, uh, you know the director Gareth Edwards? Nope. He, he did Rogue One, and he did that new movie, The Creator, which, they're all right movies. I'm not really, he's, he's all right as a director, but the way he got started as a director was really fucking cool. He, his first movie was this movie called Monsters, that he did in, I want to say Mexico, so, so, like, either Central or South, Southern American, like, country, I can't remember which one, and they didn't have a script, they would, like, basically write out treatments on the scenes like him and the actors would write out the treatments on the scenes and it was like he pretty much had a crew of like three people with him and the two main actors and they would like go around the country and pick certain places for certain things that were going to have certain events and they would like work in like real people and shit to the movie and they'd go back and like later add in like fucking monsters and shit didn't I heard about this the other day? Maybe. I don't know if it was with you or was watching something, which is what this guy, like, he would 
get a skeleton crew, go to South America, there, Central America, South America, and just with the actors, he would mm. work. Why did I see that? Maybe anyway, it might have been was it Corridor Crew that reminded me of that shit? Okay, uh, Corridor Crew, I yeah, think it was. It might have been. I think the guy who was been, recently yeah. there. Oh yeah, we, I like watching cool, cool. their. I like watching their. No, but too, very briefly. Yeah. Right, but very briefly, so we can move on. You wanna? You think that's a crazy story about the director? Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. When Tark Tarkovsky had to film Stalker, which is one of his biggest classics, like every director, like uh, Kubrick, was inspired by Tarkovsky. It's yeah. the guy is the the master. Stalker, he had to record it three times, three times. He lost the footage once in a firing. The whole movie had to record it again and again during the Soviet during Soviet censorship he recorded the first time born in a fire second time soviet government clamp it down whatever and then the third time after right as the wall was full. no it was a brief period after stalin before the new regime whatever he was able to film the third time mm -hmm. and you know what happened he died because of the movie because the the places in stalker are yes. so amazing are so amazing it's all in like chernobyl it's not chernobyl but it's like that it's yeah. all location. It's all location. It's all this. The you never seen visuals like that. If you see Stalker, you never seen anything like that. And he died to make the movie. With uh, he and a bunch of his crew died of radioactive cancer to oh, make damn. that movie. So if you want, you want to hear the craziest director story ever. I mean, that's yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty crazy. And uh, the film is amazing. It's amazing. It's a masterpiece. I think the the first director I ever heard of to to work that way was. And this is when I was a teenager when I really idolized this guy as a director and less so now because of his later work. But uh, Robert Rodriguez, like the entire El Mariachi movie, like he made that for $8,000. Yeah. Like he had a, a guitar case, a friend that was willing to act, a turtle and a camera. <laughs> a turtle? <laughs> yeah, there's like there's like a whole thing with this turtle in the road. Uh, but anyway, let's get back to this. Um, this is like, it just, it's the whole thing. It's like a four hour fucking stream until, uh, Eric leaves. It's the most awkward shit ever. It's just like, everyone's just like, yeah, cool. How about this other thing that will get you to talk for 20 minutes? So I don't have to pretend like I don't want to be here. Eric did that. Um, that's, you know, an act. she's built like an athlete. And uh, she's tall, and the actress, the actress taller than me. She's like six. I do she, like her she, physique, She's got to be at least six three, Morgan. Um, so yeah, it's just perfect. But you know, they were sending me back everything, and I was approving this and and that, and it was just really cool to see. Just see, again, how much detail even goes into just making. Like they just finished the trailer, and he's talking about her costume. Who the fuck? cares about the costume we don't know anything about this bitch like we don't know does she have ice powers background does she have energy powers she an was alien she born with it yeah because like she says she, she's been here so that means what she's like old like she like like there's there's nothing there's nothing that of any kind of substance everything's vague Everything is always vague with Eric because he doesn't want to actually make decisions. And I I don't think he knows these characters. He claims he, he's invented them, but I don't think he actually even knows these characters. He still can't tell people if fucking Isom has powers or not. Why is that something you're being dodgy about? <laughs> like... No, okay, I was telling uh, Hal about this and that. There's a show I used to like from, like, the 2000s. It's a British show called Misfits. Uh, I watched it. You remember the the, the group of uh, pro uh, kids on probation? Well, I say the kids. They look they're like, like a misfit, Tosin. They're, like, early Thank 20s. You. They get struck by a uh, lightning from this weird lightning storm. It gives them all superpowers, except for the, the mouthy asshole who he can't figure out what his power is. And they, they're doing this whole thing, like, he's, like, I don't know if it has a power, but it's because it's fucking with him. It helps reveal his characteristics. It shows that he is fucking jealous of all these stupid people, and that he believes that he has a power so much that he's willing to do all this stupid shit. Make himself look retarded 
repeatedly because he believes he's got a superpower. And it's not until the last episode of the first season when he actually sacrifices himself to save his friend and ends up getting skewered on a fence that he finds out he's immortal. Mm-hmm. And like he wakes up in his coffin going, I fucking knew it. <laughs> and it's like, ah, oh, shit, I'm buried. <laughs> it's a fucking great show. No, mm-hmm. Costo, man, it was cool. Is, is she a bodybuilder? Give or take, she's a trainer. Uh, so wait, she's hold just on. What does that mean? Deal, so, what does yeah. give or take she, mean? Is she a bodybuilder? Builder, give or take. What? Or is she, or is she not? Well, give or take is not what you would say about whether you could say sort of. That would be a vague answer that would apply, but to say give or take that implies like amount quantity. That's not a quantitative question. Just like, say no. Just be like she's just a trainer. She's yeah, she's a trainer. She's not a bodybuilder. She's a trainer. That's why her acting sucks, is because she's a trainer. <laughs> she's not an actor. And honestly, I kind of feel bad for her. This is her first thing she's ever done, and this is what she's gonna be best known for right now. It's not good. That's not going to be good for your career. <laughs> I really hope that you don't give a shit about acting. She's a trainer. Uh, so she just I wonder where she, they so, got her yeah. from. Like, did I, she girls from Alberta, audition I for it? Did he know her already? You know what I mean? Like, That's a good question. Could she have been Eric July's trainer? Well, no. She's I think Canada, it's a Sasuke. So, yeah. I think it's a Sasuke's connection. Could she have been the Saskas trainers? Actually, she's from Alberta. <laughs> no, they ain't training shit. You can't two. lift away ugly. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You can't starve yourself from being not ugly in the face. <laughs> yep, they make them big out there. <laughs> I have only one criticism. And that is Isom's boots were new. <laughs> okay, gotcha. I, that that I please I know, you know take that. I know Chato is just being a cheeky bastard here. But this joke criticism actually tells what if Eric listened and understood abstract things, he would see this joke criticism as actually being a pretty insightful criticism to everything that they do which is a lack of an attention to detail Isom's yeah. boots looked too new if you ain't gonna make the boots look right how the fuck are we gonna trust you to get the story right how you do one thing is how you do everything that with whatever criticism you. You can handle it. I got you. Sorry for bringing that up. No, nah, no, nah, I need to hear it. <laughs> we got horse radish power. He, Go ahead, he, w- he went to the shoe store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you notice how he skipped right past that that super chat? <laughs> Did you see what it said, Kyle? It said, "Does nope. Isom and Yaira follow the hero's journey?" <laughs> <laughs> and he just went, showed it and skipped right past. <laughs> there you go. So the, Dude, these so guys the actress here is, uh, is like Canadian. Bitches. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, because as someone stuck with an accent, I had questions about that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. She's Canadian. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. She came yeah. in and did it. <laughs> it's awkward. Like nervous. It's like, whoo. Goop. You could literally hear the goop. Goop. <laughs> this is going great. <laughs> this is going real great. The lips are smacking. <laughs> that was slow. <laughs> this is what they're doing the whole time. I was like, yep, 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 yep. Make it more about me. Yep, yep, yep. Bup, bup, Can you make bup, it more, bup, bup. dude? I, th- I'm starting to think that like Eric might be a narcissist. Like, yeah. At the very least, he is an attention whore. Like, the whole, I'm convinced at this point, the entire Ripaverse is to keep attention on him.
Who? I don't believe you guys. That sounds pretty fucking sad. A good job. She had um it, it was difficult, you know, her trying to uh, you know, master that that, that Act. the the accent and I don't want to NDA myself as I always. Why joke did you about. need to give her an accent? Like they imply that she's not from Earth, that she's an alien. Illegal, really? <laughs> why don't you just do what, like, why don't you just do what everybody else does and just give her like a British accent? That's foreign. It's foreign, elegant. That's what I mean. Essentially, what Marvel did with the fucking Asgardians, give them all goddamn fucking British accents. Makes them sound regal. Just and make shit. her, make her say like gobbledygook, like blah 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 blah, blah. and then they put like some <laughs> effects on the voice and subtitles. There we go. Invented Honestly, a whole new that language. Would, that would improve the acting significantly. <laughs> it, would, it would. It have... would play to her strengths. Dude, I was watching. I was rewatching the other day uh, the. Rick Gervais, Golden Globes, <laughs> roastings. And one of them, That's he was great. so right. A couple of years back, he was like, all those Marvel movies, the all the movies nowadays, they, they, they have to wear this tight stuff and all that. Their job is not acting anymore. It's like going to the gym twice a day and taking steroids. I mean, yeah. Get the fucking giant corporations to pay for that shit too. For someone that's like severely vain, like most actors are, it's a goddamn fucking dream. Because that's true. what she, that that's her thing. She's strong. Yeah, she goes to the gym. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like I don't. I'm not saying that people can't learn to act. It's more of like getting people over having a camera pointed at them, so they don't act weird, so they act naturally, and like teaching people how to like actually. Not just say the lines, but to, like, feel the emotional beats in the scene and, like, actually try to live the scene. You know, that's the hard part, is get them over that. Like, once you get somebody past that threshold, like, I'm, I'm sure there's, like, d very degree of skill, but it's, it's, it's acting. Just, just pretend you're there. It's not that hard. We used to do it as kids all the time. He's doing fucking, like, toy lightsabers and shit. Did I really think I was Luke Skywalker? No, but god damn it, I was gonna fucking give him my best. And they supposed to have, like, discovered her? Like, this is the, the yeah, this first, is her first year? Thing. She's this like a cat. First, okay. Yeah. And by Whatever. discover her means they did uh, one of Sasuke's uh, sister's trainers. Of favor. Given that kind yeah. of a way. Um, they probably owed her a lot that, of money. Like, kind wait, of what originates, if we uh, when you, you read Yaira number one? Film. But it was a tall order uh, for her, and yeah, I just... If, if we do do something longer form, she's our gal either way because she she really does. Um, it's not a whole lot of they don't just drop from the sky six three jack chicks. Um, they're not. Okay, so this is a little off subject here, but uh, lately Hal has been obsessed with the latest um, Kanye song. I haven't uh, heard him. You is it with his daughter in it? Is it like a hip hop version of Erica? No, no, no. It's um. <laughs> okay, hold on. I gotta find it. Is it a remix of Hal, like Darchel and W. Barrel? <laughs> Hal, if you're listening, put the link in the chat. So <laughs> make it. Oh, here it is. I found it. Never mind. I already found it. So. I fell in love with. Let's see. Right here. <laughs> Well, I know that it ain't over in the morning. You'll I'll probably have to beat this later. Back to me. Was God damn it. Hold on, I gotta find the right part. I've been searching high and low. And I can tell you one thing. Beautiful big titty butt naked women just don't fall out the sky, you know. Eric July's been listening to Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to what he said. Big titty falling six three, read Yaira number one, but it was a tall order uh, for her. And yeah, I just if, if we do do something longer form, she's our gal either way because she she really does. Um, it's not a whole lot of they don't just drop from the sky six three jack chicks. Um, they're not. Oh, five point five five point two ninety. He's straight up quoting the song. <laughs> Yeah, he just 
<laughs> as soon as I saw that, I said that to Hal, I was like, Ergel has been listening to Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so i got one more clip from this now one of the things that uh eric chillai um talked about on this stream was that the str red wolf has Yaira a, a really campaign good... specifically this started with the ira campaign they do all their pre-orders right the campaign's usually like like two months or something like that they do the pre-orders and they send out the books. Um, I don't know the exact details. Ethan Van Skyver was was talking about this uh, the other night. He knows a lot way more about this than I do. But there's some sort of agreement you have with PayPal if you're doing a pre-order service that you have to, if I remember right, you have to deliver the goods within, I think he said 20 days of the uh, the receiving of the money. I don't mean I don't know if that means the, like the money as a whole, or like each individual. I would assume it probably means like as a whole. So what is happening is, Ripaverse will no longer be using PayPal. And mm. Eric has been very dodgy about why this is. Now he's saying it's because of some sort of lawsuit. I don't know what kind of lawsuit you would have with PayPal. Like, unless they, like, you know, basically said you can't use our service anymore and you're like, well, I want to use your service, so I'm going to sue you to let have me use your service. Like, I don't understand the, even the logic in something like that. It's like, if someone doesn't want you to use your service, just use their competitor. Um, right. So, Eric is not, is being very dodgy on the reasons. And the reason some people think is because huge portions of Yaira are having to be redrawn. Now, there's a there's an infamous panel, okay? Oh, Yaira sitting at uh like a interrogation table across from uh the Superman person. They're Superman. I think his name's like Solari or some shit like that. Um, but she has her head turned like this, looking over her shoulder, and it looks like somebody walked up and snapped her neck. Like, the head's like, like, it looks grotesque. Like, it looks like someone mm -hmm. ripped the head around. And Eric claims that book, or that page is not in his book. He says, this, I don't know where they got this from. They must have got it from Instagram or something. Um, where that page came from, I'm trying to find it. No, I didn't think to pull this up earlier. Let's see, I'm going to go to the Read Online Comics. Go to Isom 2. You go all the way to page 115. Okay, one back. So, this is Alpha Core. Mm. Okay. So, this is the. Uh, let me make this full screen, make it a little more seeable. So, this is the um, the very one of the very last pages of ISUM number two, with a ad for Alpha Core by Chuck Dixon and Joe Bennett, with some pencils. Look pretty good. Pretty good pencils. And then you have the one for Yaira. Okay, this is the Yaira one. This is in his book that he printed. This... Oh, shit. I went too close. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. How do I get back? <laughs> that's... That... See, can you see... The head... How it's, tw it's it's a little pixelated because it's, it's what the fuck? Is that see, a, like, a, it looks like someone snapped her fucking neck. Possessed by a demon? Exactly. Is she wearing a mask behind her head? <laughs> yes. No, she's actually the uh, the magician from that one season of uh, American Horror Story. <laughs> right. It also yeah, it looks like one of those porcelain masks. Yeah. So she she has her like fucking head all snapped around, and this was the this is the page. 
that he's referring to when he says that's not in the book. I don't know where they got that from. They, I, they, they got. In, he's. This is how he said it. He worded it. In some ways, they got it from Instagram. The fuck does the, that mean? The art. So they were talking about that art, that specific drawing, and he was like, "Yeah, that's not in the book." Was he denying it? Yes, he's denied. This, this is much is in the worse book. than the things that the two first ones. Is the ink guy fucking the? Well, this, the, no, the this is a ink? this is a different book. This is okay. Uh, so Alpha yeah, Core. this is good. This is Yaira. This is Joe Bennett. This is bad. This good. is Deborah Cart bad. Carta good. Carita. Dude, I right. I was trying to look and like, okay, so it's the same guy who drew the. No, 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 it's not. So yeah, not only the. Oh my god, that scene is so stiff. The way, the way she has the hands on a table, it's so stiff and and. Yeah, it, it doesn't looks even like look someone like he's making like contact. Seized control, like that would be a good like drawing if if the the action was a telepath seized control of her and like snapped her body, like killed her. Like that would be like ah, like head backwards, arms out, stiff, perfect for that. She is supposed to be looking over her shoulder. <laughs> right. Even the guy, the whole thing is like very janky compared to like the the drawings yeah. about. Well, some uh some people think that. <clears throat> The reason why this guy looks so weird is because it's traced from one of Joe Bennett's drawings. The guy who drew what? Alpha Core. Yeah. Th so uh, they, they're they incestually ripping it, each other up? Well, I mean, that's honestly, there's not really a lot of problem with that. The problem is you're not being able to make it look seamless. Because there, there, uh, there are artists all the time who trace. Like Alex Ross, one of the, the guys who does one of the most realistic looking art you're in... making the argument for 3d remember the argument no, 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 making no. for 3d no kyle kyle this is 3D. i know I, I, no, 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 no. Literally... I got you you're right I, what i was saying is if it they if he hires someone to draw this thing you'd you say the name i don't know yeah. the lady whatever Deborah and the guy is doing the other thing Sada. of course the it's not a problem to reuse stuff inside a company but it just showed incompetency. Why would you need yeah. to retrace well, the other artist's why, stuff? That's what the the um, theory right now is on why he is not he, like he had to stop using PayPal because PayPal would not allow him to push the actual shipping date of Yaira back, which would give them more time to finish redrawing shit like that. Mm. But I that's find what's it... happening. I have okay, a this very PayPal theory. So how? Because I don't usually buy stuff with PayPal and all that campaigns and all that. Mm -hmm. So how does it? How does PayPal? Is it? Uh, is it like tied in with the account on the webs? And not only the account, but the the tracking of the delivery. How does account? How does PayPal I, I think knows to... if you? I would assume just. Just finish my theory. I would assume that they have a period where if you got no contests, mm -hmm. that will be considered maybe. Just an idea. Well, I, I don't know exactly how it works, but from what I understood was that when you do a pre-order campaign like, like Eric July does, the terms of service with PayPal is you have to, you have to um, ship the goods you're selling within 20 days of receiving payment. Right. So if like, if we had like, if I had like an eBay store and say I was, uh, I was making, you know, I don't know. I was making fucking glass tumblers, right? Handmade glass tumblers. I have to make sure I ship. Now, I don't know how the proof of that works. How do you prove that to PayPal? I'm not sure. Maybe you have to send them like, like a receipt. Of the shipments, maybe you have to like take a picture and like upload it to their their website or something. I don't know exactly. Uh, doesn't make sense. But no, I, I'm, question, saying, I'm just giving a possibility. I don't know exactly how right, you right. have to do it. I haven't gone through the process myself. But I'm saying. But you said that they retain the money. That's why you got. What's the consequence? No, just because I the, forgot your explanation. If, if you don't fulfill it, they terminate your service with PayPal. Okay. Okay. But you get the money. In a, but you get the money when suppose you get the money. I got you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, again, that that means I also don't know if receipt, uh, re, uh, re, what, re, receiving of payment 
means when you actually cash out from PayPal and take all the money. Or if it means when the person gives you the money, gives your PayPal the money. I'm not sure exactly how that goes. Those are things I don't know. That's why this is like, for me, this is just kind of hearsay. Go, go listen to Ethan Van Skyver talk about it. He's way more knowledgeable with this stuff. He, he's gone through it many times. So I trust what he's saying. He hasn't given me any reason to not trust him yet. He does though. Yeah, I think he get the he, fucking hammer. Yeah, I think you're right about <laughs> that. I think he's right about that because I was searching. I didn't drop the link on the back bar. They actually have a whole shebang for pre-orders, like a whole how it should operate. And all oh, that. they so had like it, a whole video. Uh, oh, I, I thought, thought it was a video. No, no. Just so I, I thought it was like, why would PayPal even get into dealing with that? But yeah, I think it's. Why do they have like a happy family as the? <laughs> the Dude, guys? it's a white family, kind of barely. Kind of <laughs> the guy, the guy is dubious, but it's a white family, dude. That's great. How does the pre-order work? Announce and promote the product. Provide details. Open the pre-order window. Create a specific pre-order window. Sales. Don't forget the right. So I'm, I'm... Oh, okay. They're just telling you how to promote shit. Yeah, I'm reading right at the end on the fact on the fake fact FAQ. How long do pre-orders take? And they say pre-orders pre-order periods can vary depending on the specific product, industry, and market marketing strategy. They typically last from a few days to every week. Some businesses may choose to run shorter. Greatest sense of union. Yeah. So there's a variable, but I, I suppose you gotta declare the time frame and keep with the time frame. Yeah. yeah. If Eric declared 20 days. And it may be too, like, based on what kind of product it is, you get, like, a certain window. Like a book. I think it's what you declare. I think you got to declare when you create a pre-order campaign. Let's say 20 days. You declare that. The client, when he's going to buy, he accepts the terms on 20 days. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then you got to fulfill 30 days. But if you put 60 days, it's 60 days. I yeah. think, but, but it's not... Now, maybe he can make his own pre-order... Time frames, but it's still he's he gotta settle on one time frame, and yeah. that would also fuck with his like the disorganized. Dude, if harshies. he doesn't take this opportunity to make his own payment processor, he's a fucking moron. Cause that's the ultimate gatekeeper, right? Payment processors. No, but if that's... you have your own way of processing credit cards or in debit cards, like for like you donos and shit. Get shot. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like if you have your own way of doing it where you don't have to rely on Streamlabs or PayPal or anyone like that, that is so much fucking freedom. Yeah, that's the dream. <laughs> yeah, like you make it. And he has the money to where he could do it and he no, could make it a no. public... Like, if he really wanted to make money, this is what f this fucking moron would do. If Dude, he wanted to make crazy. money... Nobody can do that. Yes, Elon they Musk can. can do that. Elon yes. Musk can do that. Dude, they <laughs> make, Elon Musk they make with payment Swift? process. There's people that make their own payment process all the time. It just takes coding. And nah, a lot nah, of people nah. don't know how to do that. No, 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 no. No, sir. They they make front ends okay. that use previous systems. Nobody's making systems. And either you're using Swift, it doesn't matter. Now, there's layers. You can have a company mm -hmm. who that company has licensing with we Swift. We may be talking about different things. Them. Yeah, we may be talking about different things. I mean, like, when I say a payment processor, I mean, like, PayPal uh, or front. Streamlabs. Yeah, I guess you would call it a front then. If he doesn't make his own front for payment processing, he's a fucking moron. Right. Like, this is a... He has the money, or he has at least the... Um, the the what would you call it the equity to like get loans to like make a payment processing company and then allow other people to use it and take a like a little chip off of it like everybody else does on theirs that's mm -hmm. how you make your money eric that's how you keep your warehouse going so i'm thinking about the name what do you think about ripa cash ripa cash i like ripa cash oh. i like ripa cash, Ripa cash. <laughs> like, see, this is actually a good idea. His ideas are, let's make a magazine. It's a stupid fucking idea. 
Scarlet Gray says, Ethan Van Skyrim may not have 100% of my backing, but his comics are pretty good and his art is unreal. Plus, he uses legit services like Kickstarter. Yeah, there's a lot of things like, there's a lot of things over the years I've heard about Ethan that could be, you know, some things could be uh, skewed negatively, but everybody does stupid shit, you know? Everybody, especially on the internet, like when you have like a camera and a microphone in front of you, like most of the time when you're doing this shit, like small mistakes can get like really, really exacerbated and really just not in detail. But what's the what's the kind of stuff people say about him? I don't know. I heard, I heard that he he had docked somebody like years ago. Okay, being an edge lord online. Well, no, I, I think it was an accident. I think he accidentally pulled up the screen and it was there. And it's like honestly though, like I get why people want to remain anonymous on the internet. But at this point, like, maybe I'm just so fucking road weary where I'm just like, I don't care. People can know my name's fucking Jonathan. I don't give a shit. Like, I don't give a fuck. Just don't tell people my fucking address. <laughs> don't give people my address. Don't give people my phone number. I don't care if you have my docs. I don't give a shit. <laughs> speaking of no, address. No, say something. Yes. I, know. <laughs> I was going to say, burnt. speaking of uh, address and phone number, um, <laughs> I have uh, Hormaxer's home address and phone number. I'm gonna start sending this motherfucker like long handwritten letters. <laughs> I saw his penis because Trippy sent it to me, and it was Why disgusting. Trippy need the Trippy need broken on are... the inside. Like Trippy's like legit broken on the inside. <laughs> like does he Trippy? Do you realize that? <laughs> like you're broken. I think he has, and he just accepted it. All right, Kyle. So uh, this is what Eric had to say about um, the whole PayPal thing. Then STR Red Wolf has a, a really good question here. Uh, any update, Eric, on the legal situation with PayPal? Is it all settled out well, now? As far as not like in a legal sense of settled, um, this is actually still something that my guys are we're we're exploring. We got the money. Um, that that we long got that. So it's not like they're still we're sitting good. on that one, uh, million dollars that they that they have. We got that. Um, once we started to send letters and, 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 you know, legal stuff was, I don't want to say it threatened, but we were letting them exactly, know that this Joe. is not cool, but, you know, considering how long they did have it for the months that they had it, it, yeah, uh, we, we, we have a problem with that. And that's something that's still, you know, it's legal stuff. You guys know this stuff takes, takes a minute, but as far as us having the money, we have it. We did get the money, actual money that they owed us. And you're not using them again yes well I, I will never work with that company as far as um Riververse is concerned again never again because oh. they wouldn't let you extend the time period in which you could send out your merchandise no but okay so that wait, wait, wait. so so paypal had was sitting on a million what million general million i've never heard this before. to pre-orders because i would if like it was to hear tied, more about this yeah right that that didn't sound right so was Suspicious. there like was there perhaps was there problems with uh with Alpha Core and they didn't get the payment from Alpha Alpha Core immediately? I'll be that honest, was the, that was I the, don't the, think it about as much as they made on Alpha Core was like one point six, I think. I don't think it was like PayPal caring about his overall campaign, whatever it was. I I'm. I'm thinking, like, actually, like, maybe he didn't have his ducks in a row legal, legally wise, something like that. Because if it's not a a pre-order campaign, it's a bunch of money from all the sources. It's money, just money, pile of money. Chat's I don't think PayPal is caring about. This is all about... from ISOM number one. So, he, huh, so he why doesn't did have we not any... hear about this then? So he doesn't have anything to do with pre-ordering. So, and PayPal is stingy. If you if you're not legally there, if you're doing something wrong, they're well, gonna... Well, I don't... I wasn't, like, in... We weren't in on this shit during the ISOM one, because, uh, frankly, I didn't give a fuck. Um, so, I, I'm I'm wondering what what happened. What mm -hmm. made PayPal keep your money then, Eric? If it wasn't, you know, you not fulfilling your shit within a timely manner. Right. Because if it's not tied to the pre to the specific PayPal pre-order option stuff that they offer, because other second of all, second of all, too, I just realized that 
you don't need to use that. That's a that's a service that PayPal provides, mm -hmm. where you you create. It's it's PayPal trying to take shares from Kickstarter. Yeah. You create a campaign on PayPal, and it, the client everything it's managed in that. But you don't need you don't need to use that if you have pre-orders on your website and PayPal is just a is just a method of payment. I don't think in that I don't think PayPal says no. From then on, every kind of pre-order business got to be done through that. I don't think that's the case, and I don't think Eric was using that. I think he was doing on his own website. So it's something else, I think. Huh. Right? Well, he did his first campaign. Um, I don't know what website he used, but he didn't do it on his website like he was after that. But I think a lot of it is because he didn't have the money yet for the website. Like, for all that shit. Because, like, a normal website is not really expensive to make. I don't know how much a a campaign type shit would cost to make. Because it, it seems like there's a lot of, like, coding that would have to go into all that. Because there's a lot of shit that's got to be done automatically. So, I, I'm, okay. I'm wondering why why that took so long. There's a, Honestly, right. there's just a lot of, like, we don't really have any answers to this. There's just a lot of questions here. Why mm -hmm. are you really not using PayPal? Why did PayPal hold on to a million dollars of your I saw one campaign, but you got the other 2.6? That seems weird. It hmm. feels like he's bullshitting us. Like, now, this weird, could yeah. be that, you know, we're, we're getting little pieces of information from the chat here. It could be we, we're missing some pieces that would make this picture come together more. Um, everyone's got any clips or anything. Right. I'm just based on what he said straight yeah. there, you know, what he said. I don't think he was using pre PayPal's pre-order campaign service for Eyes on One. I think it was just money, money mm -hmm. coming in through PayPal. And if if that's the case, then people would have to protest individually if they didn't got the product and then PayPal gives the money back. But that will be, like, be a bunch of individual. One, like his, like you know, I'm not sure that he does it this way. But just let's say he he does the shipments in waves, right? You uh, you send out the first five thousand or whatever books in like a wave, and you keep doing that until you get all your books mailed, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Could it be like people in the later YouTube, uh, the later like you know shipping waves, uh, were complaining, and that's why he's been like bragging about all this like. Oh, dude, maybe that's it. Hold on. Maybe that's fucking it. Okay, so he really didn't start bragging about the warehouse and the shipping shit really hard until, like, right after the ISOM... Was it right around ISOM 1? Where he just kind of started slowly bragging about the warehouse? But maybe all of that came from this. Maybe the, like one of the later like phases of his shipping, a lot of customers got fucking pissed off and started complaining to PayPal because it was taking too long, and uh, so you know so PayPal. Even if it wasn't, him. yes, even if it wasn't the pre the pre order option, if enough people ask 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 for returns, mm -hmm. it would like had a red flag in the system oh you guys are under maybe. so your whole thing is under uh you know maybe and then that's why he starts bragging about the warehouse and how, <coughs> how they're moving differently in the in their shipping department they're, they're they're advancing their their fulfillment techniques you mean putting a comic book in a box and then putting that box in a bin to take to the goddamn post office like how difficult is this, can this really fucking be? Remember those black guys from what I've some podcasts we watched and the dude was like, "I haven't got my my asthma yet." Mm -hmm. Maybe there was and a lot that of was like, like more that. than a month. Yeah, maybe there's a lot of people like that, and it was all the way from me. He's been bragging about how quickly they get all their shit shipped out, and it's been bullshit this whole time. If that's true. We don't, we don't even have that confirmed, but that seems like the most likely scenario is he was late on getting a certain number of people's books to him. They complained to PayPal. PayPal froze a million dollars of his money and basically held on to it until they sued him and rev like revoked their ability to use PayPal. 
and it was probably the last million. Like it was saying, you, you were saying two point six or whatever from yeah from the beginning, and then his last million got frozen because of too many uh, complaints and all that. Maybe yeah, could be. I mean, it, it, Eric July wants to be a legit businessman, uh, lying and stealing and. <laughs> All that shit. That's about as legit as he's ever gonna get. <laughs> yeah. Damn, like that's I don't know, maybe we maybe we figured that out, Kyle. I well, that you would, can't that make would make a sense. business man unless you do this. You have to do this. You have to dominate. Let me get my, my microphone in the right position so I can so I can dominate. Do I yeah, I gotta dominate scary? the bathroom right now, girl. Do I look intimidating? Hmm gonna dominate <laughs> so yeah I, it's gonna have me wondering for a while like i don't know if we'll ever get conf confirmation either man skyver claims he has an inside guy in uh the whole ripperverse thing i don't know if that's true i don't know if he's just trying to uh <laughs> make air july scared or not Oh, no, we need. Hey, Toasty, we totally need to get you to turn one of the, the like effeminate like wee black guys that works for him. <laughs> like, <laughs> we need you to, like get in there. Hey, hope you enjoyed that clip or hated it. Either way, we're live Monday through Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube or over on Rumble at rumblecom c ministry of dude Links are in the description. But you know what? You really love the show. You can go right on over to ministrydude.locals.com, sign up for the Hammer Club, just a mere $5 a month. Get you access to all our bonus episodes where we really sink our teeth into the internet's most notorious, disgusting, and stupid characters. Come join us.